The Sims 4 is a very buggy game. In fact, in all of my brutally honest reviews of all of the Sims 4 packs, I always have a dedicated section to bugs and glitches because they happen so frequently. Many people speculate this is because The Sims 4 is built on a very rocky platform and the coding was terrible. I don't know, I'm not professional, but whatever's caused a problem, the problem exists. And there are many Sims 4 packs that I genuinely love, but they just don't work. So I'm ranking them all based on how well they do or do not work. Happy Holiday, that's just a free bloody update with the Christmas tree in it. That's not buggy. The actual base game itself. Okay, I actually have done a video where I played The Sims 4 with no packs installed to see if it was actually fun. But one thing I noticed was that it was actually really bug free. Yes, when I did certain things, for example, the in-game events, it was a bit buggy. But in general, I'd actually say the base game is pretty good. So I'd say minor bugs only. By the way, it goes from doesn't work at all, works in speed one, annoying but works, minor bugs only and bug free. Normally I give my tier list really funny names but I actually wanted this to be useful. What I mean by it works in speed one by the way means that sometimes the Sims 4 lags and is more buggy when you do it in speed two or speed three mode. If you only play in speed one it works a lot better. Starting with expansion packs get together. This pack is actually pretty bug free. I have had some issues before with the club system where club members wouldn't do certain things, but it's not necessarily caused by bugs, but more so just gameplay oversights. I've genuinely never had like a proper buggy buggy thing happen with get together. So I will say minor bugs only. The cats and dogs pack Oh my lord, there are so many pathing issues with cats and dogs, it's ridiculous. They always clip in and out of weird things, there's always action cancelling going on. The actual obstacle course that you can set up with pets rarely ever works, it's very buggy. And the veterinary career that comes with the pack is so buggy, it is impossible to be a vet and actually have it work very well. The gameplay of this pack is so annoying, but it does work fundamentally, it's just you have to be very patient patient with it. You have to approach it with a grain of salt and understand animals in general in The Sims 4 are not always the best. So I'm going to say it's annoying, but it works. The City Living Pack. This pack doesn't really come with that much complex gameplay. It obviously comes with a new world with apartments, but because there isn't like much intricate gameplay in it, it doesn't bug out much. But one horrifically annoying thing about this pack is random townies walking into your apartment. For some reason, the game doesn't register an apartment as a real house. So Sims will often just like walk in and out of your apartment for basically no reason. Sometimes your neighbors will make loud noise and keep your Sims up at night. And the way to resolve this is to knock on their door and say, hey, shut up, please. But a lot of the time the game won't actually let you because it's broken and it can making living in an apartment very immersion breaking and annoying. But in general, I'd say it's pretty bug free. So it's annoying, but it works. The seasons pack. This pack doesn't really come with like gameplay. It just comes with weather. So I wouldn't say it's really buggy at all. The only gameplay that it comes with is the holiday traditions. And even then, this is actually very simple gameplay because it only revolves around performing certain interactions. Sometimes you might see a bit of snow laid on an object that it shouldn't be. But in general, I've honestly never had an issue with seasons at all. So I would actually say minor bugs only. Congratulations, seasons. Taking a look at the get to work pack. This is one of my favorite packs for The Sims 4. I love the retail system. I love the idea of active life careers. I genuinely recommend the pack for basically almost all players. And that's because get to work is really fun. Unfortunately though, the life careers can be a little bit buggy, particularly the doctor's career. It can be very, very annoying. There's a lot of like simulation lag with this pack and it is very no Noticeable. Another horrendous issue is with the retail system. It does work. 100% it does work, but you'll often find if you own a retail store, Sims will click through each other and they'll do the wrong thing and it's a bit annoying. I definitely think you need to have a high level of tolerance for get to work. Because of that, I'm putting it in works in speed one. Having a look at the cottage living pack, surprisingly, again, I genuinely can't think of that many issues with the pack. There are some issues with the Finchwick Fair. It can be a little bit annoying doing the competitions because the gameplay 
doesn't really recognize what you're doing sometimes, but in general, it's one of those packs that doesn't directly come with a ton of gameplay, but more so minor features. And when you've got these minor features, it doesn't really cause a game to bug out so much. So I'm going to put this one in minor bugs only. The Snowy Escape Pack is one of the kind of immersion breaking packs of The Sims 4, particularly with the ski slope system, because Sims were often click through each other. I also think the lifestyles thing that comes with the pack is a little bit buggy. I don't even know how lifestyles work because they're such a weirdly implemented feature. But in general, I don't have major issues with Snowy Escape. It's just purely certain clipping issues. So I'd say minor bugs only. Taking a look at Get Famous, this is a very weird pack because it's not necessarily buggy, but it more so has a lot of oversights. Don't get me wrong, there are bugs with the pack, of course, as there are in any Sims 4 pack. The frustrating thing is five star celebrities will turn up to lots which are basically not lots you'd see a five star celebrity. The pack comes with a special lot trait which is the hottest place in town which is basically a lot that attracts five star celebrities. But what EA failed to do is fix the issue where five star celebrities turn up in regular lots. So if you turn up for example to Willow Creek, Magnolia, Blossom Park, five star celebrities will turn up even though it's inappropriate and it's such a big issue that they haven't fixed for years and they've basically abandoned it, which is annoying. So I'm going to say it's annoying, but works because it can be quite immersion breaking. Taking a look at Island Living, this pack is not too glitchy, but I will say there are some issues with swimming. Sometimes your sims will like disappear off the lot and you have to like load back in and out. The only real issue is that sometimes there is a lot of lag, especially if you go onto the community beach. But I found that these issues didn't happen all the time and it performs relatively well when I do play it. So I'm going to say minor bugs only. The Sims 4 Discover University. Oh my lord, where do I start? <laughs> it's funny because this is genuinely one of my favorite packs for The Sims 4 and it's such a shame, but unfortunately it just doesn't work very well. The social events with the pack like the keg party, absolute disaster. Trying to get your Sims to path and find their way to their classes, absolute disaster. My my Sims always accidentally miss classes, they accidentally miss exams, they accidentally miss social clubs. There's just way too much going on in this pack for its own good. And it's a shame because I genuinely really, really love the pack. It's just unfortunately something that doesn't work very well and you do require a lot of patience for it. So I'm going to be putting it in works in speed one only. Taking a look at high school years again. Oh my bloody lord. <laughs> something about the education pack Sims 4 just can't handle it. High school years is such a weird pack for performance. I remember when it first came out, it caused a major game breaking bug of incestuousness and teenagers having romantic relationships with adults. Like it was pretty severe. Luckily, these issues have been fixed now, but the actual high school gameplay is very buggy. Like sometimes your sim will not attend class, even though you ask them to. And then they get told off by the principal on their being detention, but then detention won't work and they won't actually go to detention. It can be so frustrating. So again, with Discover University, it works as speed one only. Taking a look at The Sims for Eco Lifestyle. This pack, I think, has a lot of shallow gameplay, a lot of annoying features, but I wouldn't necessarily say the pack is fundamentally broken at all. I've never had any issues performing the main interactions and doing the main things that you can do in the pack. There are some oversights with cross-pack play with some other packs like Seasons, but it's not the direct fault of Discover university so I would say minor bugs only. The Sims 4 growing together to be honest I found this pack was a little bit buggy to be honest. The main issue being the events for example there's a slumber party event. I don't know what it is with Sims 4 and events but like events just never work in this game. I feel like EA just need to scrap the feature or just do something to work on them because social things never ever work. Also another bug with this pack which wasn't apparent when it was first released but is apparent now. It's something 
something to do with additional traits. Basically, you know, Sims have three main traits as their personality that you can set in cast while with growing together, your Sims can develop new traits. There's a bug where your Sim will basically constantly want to develop the cheerful trait and it's a very annoying pop-up. But if you avoid the slumber party event and you ignore that pop-up when it comes up all the time, I'd say it works pretty well. So I'd say annoying but works. The Sims for My First Horse Ranch game pack is pretty buggy and I feel bad because in my brutally honest review I said that it's not that buggy. To be fair, it's not buggy, okay? The issue is more so to do with rooting issues with the horses. Horses are constantly T-posing around, clipping around, magically popping in and out of different places. They struggle to path find, they struggle to walk around and it happens all of the time. There's also a lot of lag and bugs when you have too many animals on a ranch. There's also a lot of issues with the ranch handler. If you don't know, the ranch handler is basically like a maintenance person, a service you can hire like a maid or a butler, but they help you look after your ranch with you. This has worked for me maybe like 10% of the time. And it's honestly such an unacceptable bug. Like it's pretty horrific. I wouldn't say the Sims 4 Horse Ranch does not work at all because it does work. It just requires a significant amount of patience. And I feel like it gets in the way of gameplay a lot of the time. So I am putting it in works in speed run only. I mean, it doesn't even work in speed run some of the time, but I find it generally only does work well in speed one, unfortunately. Looking at game packs, outdoor retreat has basically no gameplay in it. So it can't be buggy because there's nothing there. <laughs> so it's basically bug free almost, but no video game really is ever bug free. So it's got minor bugs only. The Sims 4 Spa Day can be very buggy and immersion breaking, especially when you actually want to become a therapist or you want to work in a spa in any capacity yourself. There's a lot of action cancelling, Sims not doing what they're supposed to do, spa events cancelling. It can be very immersion breaking and it can also be extremely laggy. I'm sorry, spa day. You're getting put in works in speed one only. The Sims 4 Dine Out. Well, this is one of the more infamous packs for not working. Dine Out basically doesn't work at all. If you're looking to sit in a restaurant and eat in a restaurant from that perspective, it doesn't work. I've genuinely never played it and it's worked properly once. Sims will get off their seat, speak to people on other tables. They won't sit back down. Their orders will be cancelled. They can't make the orders in the first place. Waiters, waitresses, chefs, they don't do what they're supposed to. You literally can't do it. It doesn't work. It's really unfortunate because I think it's such a cool pack. I do. It's one of my favourite pack concepts, but one of my least favourite packs because it doesn't work. There is the Carl's Dine Out Reloaded mod that actually makes it work, but not all of you are PC players. So I'm going to say it doesn't work at all. The Sims 4 Die Now, in my personal opinion, is a faulty product. Taking a look at The Sims 4 Vampires, this pack I wouldn't say really is massively buggy. Sometimes there are issues getting the vampire powers to work, but in general, I'd say it works. So minor bugs only. In fact, that goes for also the Werewolves pack. It also goes for the Round with Magic 2. These three packs basically the exact same thing, just with a different occult skin on it, and they all work pretty much the same. Taking a look at Journey to Batu, this pack genuinely actually works like really, really well. Like it's genuinely not buggy at all. Whenever I've played it, there have been minor Sims 4 issues, like action cancelling or whatever. But I think because the pack is so like limited, isolated and restricted, like the bugs just don't exist because there's just no open gameplay that exists. Journey to Batu is one of the most infamous packs for not really being a Sims 4 pack. And because of its restrictions, in a weird way, it's a good thing for bugs. So I'd say minor ones only. The Sims 4, my first parenthood stuff. I genuinely have basically nothing to say about this one. I'd say it works pretty fine. Minor bugs only. Same goes for Jungle Adventure. I literally have nothing to say. Minor bugs only. The Strangerville pack. This one does have a couple of bugs specifically relating to some of the lots. You find with this pack, you'll be in a lot of different community lots that are relevant to the storyline of the game. And unfortunately, you know, there's a whole thing going on of Sims awkwardly doing press ups when they shouldn't be clipping through each other but I'd say this is more of a kind of minor base game issue not a pack issue so I'd say minor bugs only. The dream home decorator pack oh my lord not as bad as die now but the problem with this pack is not the actual build mode itself it's when you go more so into the gameplay of the career and you actually try and like do the house tours it's implemented so sloppily that there's a lot of pathing issues. Sims don't tell you their reviews 
used properly when they should be. There are issues with turning up at the lot and returning from the lot. And it's, to be honest, unfortunately, a bit of a broken career. You can still use it. It's just a bit immersion breaking and annoying. So I'm going to say annoying, but works. The Sims 4 My Wedding Stories. If there's anything I hate in the world, it is firstly the LGBT Slay wedding dress. Secondly, it is the pack in its entirety. <laughs> clown dresses aside, this pack is basically a metaphor for a clown. It is so miserable. It is so awful. I've never had this pack work. It's even worse, to be honest, than dying out. And like, that is saying something. This pack genuinely basically is a faulty product, in my opinion. I honestly think EA should be offering refunds to everybody who bought this pack. It is such an embarrassment. It is harsh to say, but I do think that EA should be embarrassed. I think Maxis should be embarrassed that they release my wedding stories. Any company that releases a faulty product should be embarrassed. And I remember once EA kind of, I forgot exactly what the statement was, but they released a statement that was along the lines of, hey, we know this pack is broken and that's because it's a very hard thing to simulate, but we're going to work on fixing it. And I just thought it was like rubbing salt in the wounds because if you genuinely knew that implementing weddings would be a very difficult feature to implement, why did you make a whole pack on it? If you knew that it was going to be buggy, don't make the pack. Do you know what I mean? I personally think that weddings in The Sims 4 should have been implemented kind of like a scripted event where it's very fixed and you can't control it. That I think would have made it a lot better, but honestly, nothing works in this pack. When I say nothing, I literally mean nothing works. It's broken in its entirety. So you are, to be honest, you're worse than die now, but there's only five tiers here. So you're on the same level. In terms of the stuff packs, there's a lot of them, okay. But they all generally have only minor features. So I wouldn't say any of them are particularly really buggy. Paranormal stuff is my favorite Sims 4 pack of all time, but I admit it's annoying, but works. And that's because there's a lot of pathing issues with the specters, which are the little ghosts in the pack. And they can be really, really difficult to interact with. So it is annoying, but it does work. Vintage glamour stuff, the butlers, but, well, basically I'm putting this one in works in speed one only. And that's because the butlers are awful. The butlers do work sometimes, don't get me wrong, but like they don't work, I would say about 30 to 40% of the time, which I think is a number that's way too high. And I genuinely think you can only really get use out of the butlers if you're playing speed one. In terms of all of the other stuff packs, I'm chucking all of them into minor bugs only. And that's because they don't come with enough gameplay to really be glitching. Now, in terms of the kits, all of the kits, I say all, all of the kits are build mode and cast mode only. Therefore, technically they can't break because it's just, you know, objects in the game. They don't do anything. But as many people know, there is one kit in the game that is called My First Bust the Dust Stuff. Bust the Dust is a pack about vacuuming. You think, how can vacuuming be so bad? <laughs> you poor, innocent, naive soul. It is a very buggy pack. I don't own it because I don't want it. But every single time I've seen anybody play with this pack, it is pretty awful. And that's because vacuuming was just implemented so poorly. Like your house gets dirty all of the time. How exhausting is it to see your own property, you know, need vacuuming like every bloody 10 minutes. And then when you do vacuum, it has this annoying shine. And there's a lot of bugs with it that are so broken that EA basically abandoned that as a result, honestly, that's why I think many similar speculate that kits are now build mode and cast mode only because build and cast don't break the game. Whereas a gameplay kit does break the game clearly. So Buster Dust was honestly so bad that EA basically abandoned gameplay kits because of it. So it doesn't work at all, I'm afraid. Although no game is truly bug free. So that's why we only have build mode and cast mode stuff in here. Every single video game in the entire world has minor bugs at least. I will say the less packs you have installed in general, the less buggy and glitchy your game is because I own all the packs. Like it is a double edged sword because I get a lot of good gameplay out of it, but I also get a lot of bad gameplay out of it too, just because they interact terribly with each other. Do you agree or disagree with this tier list? You guys let me know what you think. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I had a lot of fun today. I will see you in the next one.